What's up, guys? Checking in on the Celtics. Uh, I'm not going to do every night recaps, but I will check in. It's the halfway point of the season or thereabouts. Celtics pull off a tough victory over the Nets. A uh, very physical battle. Arguably, the Celtics got a couple calls their way that might have gone the other way. Some very close calls, but uh, anyway, we got the win. And uh, things are just looking so good for the Celtics. So we'll just cover this game real quick. Got 26 quality minutes out of Marcus Morris in the starting lineup. Uh, no Al Horford tonight, but Aaron Baines, very solid. Uh, you know, he racked up the foul trouble, but he was just very solid, very physical. And, uh, wow, he took a lot of shots, didn't he? 14 shots, that's a rarity for Aaron Baines. Uh, Kyrie Irving a little bit inefficient, but um, everything just fine there. And uh, Jason Tatum was super clutch, especially late fourth quarter uh, when he had a dunk and then he had a three-pointer. The Celtics were down like one point. The dunk put us up one, then the three-pointer put us up four, and that was basically the end of the game. So more growth from Jason Tatum, although the 14 points is a season average, so that won't move him. But the six blocks too, guys, six blocks for the rookie Jason Tatum. Extremely impressive in three steals. So uh, Shemi Ojale, very interesting, got the call, got the nod when uh, Jaleel Okafor was scoring like six or eight straight points. And we appeared to have no answer for him because uh, Brad Stevens put in Aaron Baines to try to stop him and it didn't work. Of course, he had five fouls, so that didn't help. But uh, Brad Stevens then quickly said, you know what, I'm going to go to Shemi Ojale, who has, didn't even play the last game or two. And he went to him, I believe it was early fourth quarter, but he went to him and uh, he stepped up to the challenge, stopped Julia Okafor the very next drive. Big Julia Okafor could not body down Shemi Ojale, just stopped him. So Okafor had to shoot a further back shot than he would have liked, missed it. And uh, Shemi Ojale played the rest of the game and uh, he had a couple of real nice stops, two in a row. Uh, great defense down the stretch, so he may find his role on this team limited going forward, okay? Because we have had some success without him, and his offensive efficiency is not good. But he stepped up big time against LeBron James, and, you know, even if he's only given us seven minutes a game, he can make some big-time defensive plays in that time without jacking up a bunch of threes like Marcus Smart would. So uh, that's very good to know because we are going to need him. He may very well be our best LeBron stopper in the playoffs. So say it's Eastern Conference Finals. Say we get there. You know, even if it's 7 to 10 minutes a game, quality minutes against LeBron James, this guy can do it. This rookie can do it. So uh, very good to know that uh, he's not been completely forgotten by Brad Stevens and he's still in the back end of the rotation. Uh, Marcus Smart, pretty clutch down the stretch. Pretty clutch, some big baskets. Then he drew the foul, the very late foul call, but he got it. Made one of two, but he had a real nice basket before then. Obviously inefficient shooting, four for ten, four for 14. Uh, Terry Rozier, only 18 minutes. Interesting. Shane Larkin, though, stepped up. And uh, nine points for Shane Larkin on very efficient shooting, stealing some of Terry Rozier's minutes um, after some big games in the past from uh, Terry Rozier. So, anyway, I think this team is in great shape, guys. Great shape. And the keys now are the keys going forward, and that's the health of Aaron Baines and the health of Al Horford. All right, Al Horford, very much, arguably, more valuable to this team than Kyrie Irving, or at least as valuable. And Aaron Baines, where would we be without him? He's almost as valuable as anyone. He has the best defensive real plus minus of all centers in the NBA. You know, maybe out of anybody in the NBA. I don't know. But uh, we really, really need his physicality. And we haven't had a guy like that, that physical, um, for like, f you know, years and years and years. Unless you want to count, uh, you know, Jared Sullinger. But uh, yeah, things are just great, guys. And the key in the playoffs is just going to be all these guys getting more and more comfortable and uh, not wilting under the pressure of the playoffs. But not only is this team, you know, right now the number one seed in the East, but we have guys who have proven, not just this year, but in years past, in playoffs past, to be extremely clutch performers in the playoffs, okay? 
So Jason Tatum has already shown himself to be extremely clutch all year round, all year long. He's probably shooting about 57% from three in the fourth quarter, all right? So it's just ridiculous. He's got that clutch gene. He had it in college too. Jalen Brown we know has that clutch gene because he did it in the playoffs, totally fearless against LeBron when the rest of our team was kind of crap in their pants. This guy had no fear. And Kyrie Irving, who has hit the most clutch shot, arguably in the history of the NBA, game seven, late fourth quarter, over uh, like MVP, Steph Curry, right? So we know that those guys are clutch. Uh, we know that Marcus Smart is clutch. He always shows up for the playoffs, right? He's had some big time playoff performances. Terry Rozier, he's been clutch too, uh, two years in a row. So, um, and then Gordon Hayward is a is a proven playoff performer if and when he comes back healthy for the playoffs. So the key is just going to be getting these guys more and more uh, comfortable, more and more confident, trying to rise up to that level, that confidence level that teams like the Warriors and the Cavaliers have. But I think we're well on our way. Obviously, the, the Warriors have the confidence from having won two out of the last three championships. Uh, but we have some really clutch guys with the clutch gene. So... Um, and the fact is that previous Celtics teams, guys like Avery Bradley, guys like Jay Crowder, not necessarily the most clutch by any means, right? These are guys who win the playoffs. If they miss their first shot or two, they would wilt a little bit, right? Isaiah Thomas, pretty clutch, but his game just not nearly as effective in the playoffs. Um, Kyrie Irving, a big step up as far as effectiveness in the playoffs over Isaiah Thomas. And then Jalen Brown, more clutch than Avery Bradley. Jason Tatum more clutch than Jay Crowder, all right? And then Gordon Hayward, Marcus Smart, Terry Rozier. We are in good, good shape, guys. So state of the franchise, top team in the East. Uh, and, the, and the Lakers have the second worst record in the NBA. I couldn't be more thrilled. I could not be more thrilled right now. And uh, we just need to stay healthy, but this season is just going to get easier and easier. It feels like we've already played a full season because it's been so intense, guys, right? So this is going to be like a second season, the second half of the year with lots of practice time, lots of chemistry building, and uh, good rest. You know, we're going to be rested and healthy for the playoffs because of the schedule. More rested than other teams without having to sit people, which is going to help our seed be high. It's going to help us be more ready. It's going to help this team not be exhausted when the playoffs start. And uh, we're just sitting really, really pretty right now. So knock on wood, but uh, that's your Celtics update as far as I'm concerned. All right, guys, I will see you soon. Peace.